Okay, welcome everybody to Poker Sesh. Hope you guys are enjoying the misfits there. Five, five, six, sure. one, five, six, one. You're on with Mike Basic. What's your question? Yeah. Hi, my name's Amy. I, I live in South Florida, and, and I play pretty much 2-5 in most of the games. Usually they're 2 five, ten 10-straddle. And it's mostly retired businessmen. You know, they want to get away from their wives. They come spend 500 a 1000 to spend a day playing poker. And I play during the day because, you know, pretty sure. much these guys go and play during the day because they fall asleep at night. So right. I play a couple times a week. I'm not a professional, but I like to play, I play at least two, three times a week. Um, now, you tend to get a lot of the same guys, and, and there's a couple of guys that are pretty much have pegged. So I just wanted to get your idea about one hand in particular and how to play against a couple of these guys that are pretty much solid. They only play aces, kings. They, they fold through the connectors. They're pretty much just really just nitty players, for lack of a right. better term. Sure. So I I played against uh, this one guy. I played against him all the time. He's always got aces, kings, ace, even ace, king. He would fold. I mean, he's truly the the tightest thing you've ever seen. So he raised. I'm on the button with ace, queen suited. I knew right away you got to put him on aces and kings. It's the only thing he'll play. He'll sit there for two hours and only play two hands. So for ace, queen, he, he raised to fifteen. I, I figured I'd call and see the flop. The the flop was. Um, two diamonds and uh, you know a napkin. So he bet. My my question is, if you if you're sure he's got aces, and you have you're drawing to the nut flush, are you? And I'm I know he's not folding aces. Am I better to just keep checking call, uh, or should I, I should say I'm on the button? Should I just call his bets and see the the flop and then see the turn and then see the river, or should a guy like that are you better off going all in even though you're pretty sure he won't fold? Um, well, my recommendation is if your read is so strong that he has aces, kings, or ace, king, then you pretty much could not choose a worse hand than ace, queen to go against that range. So I'm mean, saying if your read is so strong, I would have just folded your hand pre-flop. Like, uh, you're much better off playing a hand like, you know, four or five suited or five, six suited or pocket fours um, where your equity is much higher and you actually have, like, implied odds where your hand's not dominated. Um, because think about, like, how few flops you know, your ace queen will actually outflop or have sufficient equity against like the aces kings or ace king. I mean, basically, you got one of the very best flops you could have against their hand is basically this flush draw, and you're still basically about a two to one dog. I mean, you basically just had nine outs against um, against that hand. So, and but given that you've already decided to see a flop, and you're also confident in your read that they're never going to fold their hands, then you should just call and try and make a flush as cheaply as possible and hope that they'll pay off once once you get there. Hope, hopefully your your implied odds are big enough to offset your um you know, the bets you have to call now drawing to your flush. But right. for the most part like, I, I, I did. Just, yes. Go ahead. But you but, you say that so you, so if I'm pretty I've got a pretty solid read on this guy every time I play him. Right. I should in position I'm better off playing two to connect or small pocket pairs because I'm I'm all guaranteed he's not playing those type of hands. Amy, uh, from Amy, early Amy, position. Amy, Amy. Did you hear the, yes. the the main point of what he was saying is this though? If your read is so strong that the guy only has aces or kings, which seems like uh, I mean. I'll believe whatever you tell me, but that's a very strong read, and that's a that's a guy I don't even think as it's worth him parking the car if if his range is that small. But if your read if your read is that strong, you probably shouldn't be playing any hands against him ever, basically, unless you also have the read that once he gets into the hand, he never gets away from it. If you're if you that's right. If you tell me that a guy who only plays aces, kings, queens, whatever, uh. If you if you tell me a guy like this can get away from his hand ever, you just can't play anything against him. Just ignore him. He's an empty seat. It's basically he just doesn't. A, no, that's, that's the thing. He he won't fold those hands. He had that's. Oh. I mean, I had well, the then, ace queen. Okay. I flopped the nuts, and that is exactly what he had. He had aces. Well, then that's a different right. story. That's a different yeah, story. Yeah. If he'll fold, if, 
Go ahead. He's Mike. a calling he's a, station. He he doesn't right. even think about what you have. All he thinks about is what he has. He never folds. Right. Okay. Well, so that's Amy, a, so then, um, so then, therefore, what you need to think about it is like once you've had them to be that tight, um, like there's two types of tight players. Like being a calling station is a completely different aspect of someone's game to how tight they are because someone can be a calling station. Uh, sorry, someone can be a very tight player but then they fold a lot after the flop because they're scared of the hand being beat. There's other players who are also very tight, but they're actually calling station. So in this case, you've identified as being a very tight player that starts with a very few hand combos. They're all, like, as Lyman says, ultra premiums. Yes, but absolutely. then they can never fold their hand after the flop. So now, now what you need to do is decide or figure out if the stacks are actually deep enough that you can profitably call um, and make enough money in the times you're actually able to beat his ace or kings. And given that that's the route you should be going, ace queen is one of the worst hands to actually be doing it with because you're almost like an eight and a half to nine to one pre flop dog with ace with ace queen against you know aces. You want to be doing it with like pocket five, seven six suited, seven eight suited, nine ten suited. Yeah, basically you know hands that don't have an ace in them. Hands that don't have their straight outs blocked by aces like King Ten or King Jack, you want to be doing it with like like I said, small suit connectors, medium suit connectors, and pocket pairs. And then you yes. are flopping one, four, one and five times. You know, I mean, obviously you probably said one to eight times, but basically right. with the small suit connectors and pocket pairs, you'll have about eighteen to twenty percent equity, you know, hot and cold equity pre flop. And basically, you just have to hope that it's the one of those one and four, one and five times. We're able to actually make the best hand, and you got to fleece him for all he's worth. You know, is that is that okay, good, Amy? That's great advice. Thank yeah. you, thank you very much for your call, Amy. I hope that was helpful. <laughs>